Aligner Biomechanics. In this module, we will be discussing the basic biomechanics of clear aligners. Course outline includes a brief introduction to clear aligners biomechanics, along with certain biomechanical considerations for each of the following movements, intrusion, extrusion, angulation, torque, rotations, and translational movements. Clear aligners move teeth gradually through a series of thermoformed, tailor-made plastic trays. Each tray has a small increment of movement incorporated in it to help push the tooth into the eventually favorable position. A fundamental difference between clear aligners and traditional braces is that they push rather than pull teeth. Because of the nature of the push force of plastic, some movements are more difficult to achieve than others. In this module, we will run through the different types of orthodontic movements and how understanding biomechanics can help you achieve them with higher predictability. First stop, we will talk about biomechanics of intrusion. When talking about intrusion with clear aligners, it is best to split it into two sets of groups. The first being anterior teeth intrusion, and the second, posterior teeth intrusion. Anterior teeth intrusion. In cases where treatment planning requires intrusion, certain considerations should come in mind. Intrusion of anterior teeth is a movement that needs to be planned carefully, taking into consideration that forces need to be applied both lightly and gradually. Intrusion of anterior teeth will exert an extrusive, counteractive force on posterior teeth. Retention of the aligner is compromised because of the dislodging forces posteriorly. To overcome these problems, consider planning your treatment setup, taking the following two points into consideration. Bite ramps, as shown in the figure, are an aligner feature on its palatal surface. It serves the same purpose as traditional braces. They are placed on the upper incisors and or canines and serve two main functions, disocluding posterior teeth. This will help unlock the bite and remove any bite interferences or forces if present. It will also help provide room for any passive extrusion to occur through over eruption of teeth. In addition, they serve to apply intrusive forces on anterior teeth. This illustration shows how bite ramps appear in the 3D treatment simulation. Note that they are viewed from the top view of the arch as they are placed on the palatal surface of teeth. Second consideration is attachments. The importance of attachments on teeth adjacent to those being intruded is twofold. Firstly, retention to prevent the dislodging forces acting on the posterior teeth, and secondly, when intruding anterior teeth, a counteractive force will tend to extrude posterior teeth as a result. Having attachments on these teeth will provide anchorage to counteract these extrusive forces. When placing those attachments, consider placing them on the premolars, where the highest extrusive forces are being applied but also consider adding them on the first molars, where extrusive forces might extend. As for canines, always add attachments, even when intruding them with the incisors. This is because usually incisors require more intrusion than canines, meaning that some extrusive forces tend to affect them. Therefore, it is always recommended to have attachments on the canines. Posterior teeth intrusion. In cases where posterior intrusion is desirable, consider the following. With clear aligners, posterior intrusion is less predictable than anterior intrusion. Plan movements in a slow rate, making sure no antagonistic movements are occurring simultaneously. Consider adding attachments on teeth adjacent to those being intruded to enhance anchorage and counteract unwanted movements. When intruding posterior teeth, you could consider the use of auxiliaries, such as temporary anchorage devices, TADs. Their use depends on the amount of intrusion required, with increasing intrusion necessitating the use of TADs. 
and also when counteractive extrusive forces of anterior teeth are to be avoided. Moving on to biomechanics of extrusion. Extrusion is one of the movements that require altering the shape of the teeth. This is done through the use of attachments, as you can see in Figure 1. Adding an attachment on the incisors has given the aligner a surface to push against. Relative extrusion is a term used when teeth are being lingually or palatally tipped. This will affect the appearance of the incisal position. Therefore, you need to bear in mind that correcting a proclined tooth will result in relatively extruding that tooth as well. This is shown in Figure 2 below, where tooth in A is being relatively extruded when tipped lingually or palatally, and B, where it is being vertically extruded. This is referred to as absolute extrusion. As we discussed in the previous slide, extrusion requires the addition of attachments. The type of attachments depends on the position of the tooth within the arch. Extrusive attachments shown in Figure 1a are placed on all anterior teeth during extrusion. Synergistic movements that are favorably combined with anterior extrusion is retraction. This is because the active surface of the extrusive attachment comes at an angle to the long axis of the tooth, as shown here in Figure 1b. So extrusion and retraction can favorably occur together. This is not to say that extrusion must be coupled with retraction, but it means that if both movements are happening, combining them together will increase predictability. As for posterior teeth, horizontal rectangular beveled attachments, shown in Figure 2, are used when planning extrusive movements. Another movement to discuss its biomechanics is angulation, or what is commonly known as mesiodistal tipping, or uprightening. Uprighting a tooth requires two forces of equal magnitude acting in opposite directions, as shown in the figure below. Uprighting a tooth requires surfaces for the force to be applied on. When uprighting, these surfaces would be the mesial and the distal surfaces of a tooth. In case of spaces which would allow the plastic to wrap the tooth and tip it as required. However, when such spaces are not present, or when the amount of angulation is significant, the use of attachments is essential to guarantee the predictability of angulating a tooth. Eon uses two types of attachments when correcting angulation. The vertical rectangular beveled attachments shown in the figure to the left and root control attachments shown in the figure to the right. Both serve the same purpose. However, since the root control attachments are smaller blobs situated on the side of the tooth, they are perceived as more aesthetically pleasing. Therefore, they are commonly used in cases where angulating upper centrals is required. Now moving to the fourth movement biomechanics, which is torque. What is torque? sometimes referred to as inclination. Torque is moving a tooth around its center of rotation in a buccal-lingual or palatal direction, where the crown moves in one direction and the root in the other. It is one of the difficult movements to obtain orthodontically, not just with clear aligners. Therefore, it is advisable to overtreat torque movements to compensate for any lag that could happen. The first step in managing torque is to differentiate between teeth that require changing their torque from those which need their torque to be maintained. Firstly, we will discuss what is needed to maintain torque. Let's consider this tooth for example. When moving it bodily in a buccal direction, buccal inclination or tipping is bound to happen along the way. To counteract what we've seen in the previous slide, Plan the movement in a way that includes attachments, as shown in the figure, so that every time the tooth tips or inclines buccally, the attachment will exert an extrusive force to correct its inclination. Another way to maintain the buccal-lingual inclination is to compensate for the anticipated movement. For example, expecting a buccal inclination in the setup and compensating for it by planning a lingual or palatal inclination. 
maintaining anterior torque during retraction. This is essential to prevent lingual or palatal crown tipping. Torque enhancers are little dents on the buccal gingival surface of a tooth. As you see in the figure, the aligner applies its most force on the incisal part, and torque enhancers would apply it on the gingival part. These two forces together, applied in the same direction, make sure that the tooth moves in a translational movement rather than incline or torque. Changing the buccal lingual inclination of anterior teeth. Inclining teeth labially requires the addition of buccogingival torque enhancers as well. This is because the aligner will exert a force on the palato-incisal part of the tooth, and the little dent on the buccogingival surface will also exert a force to enhance the movement as a result. When inclining an anterior tooth lingually, consider adding extrusive attachments. This can be explained best by the figure here, where an extrusive attachment is positioned in a way that makes it have a horizontal component as well, which would help tip or incline the tooth palatally or lingually. Now, moving on to rotational movements. There are two types of rotational movements. Pure rotation, where the center of rotation is the long axis of the tooth, and hinge rotation, where the center of rotation is on the mesial or distal aspect of the tooth. The choice between each depends on your preference. Some dentists find hinge rotation to be a more predictable movement to plan than pure rotation. Pure rotation is the default for Eon Technician, unless you specify in your treatment plan that you wish to have the hinge axis rotation on a certain tooth. Attachments are key for a successful rotation of cuspids and bicuspids. Without attachments, cuspids will have a tendency to rotate less efficiently and intrude as seen in the first diagram. By providing a flat, active surface for the aligner to push against, as seen in figure D, this will help rotate the teeth with more predictability and also exert extrusive forces to hold the tooth in place to counteract the intrusive forces that are pushing the tooth into the bone. The sixth movement we will be discussing in this module is translational movements. Translation includes movements in the mesiodistal and buccolingual directions. We have covered the buccolingual translational movements when we talked about maintaining the torque of teeth. So in the next few slides, we will focus on the mesiodistal translational movements. Mesiodistal translational movements may require the use of attachments to prevent crown tipping. Other than the fact that tipping is unsightly and creates what is called a black triangle, it increases the risk of relapse when the crown moves but the root doesn't follow. Attachments used are usually vertical, rectangular, beveled. Using root control attachments for centrals has been shown to have similar effects, but higher aesthetic perception. Similarly to buccolingual translational movements, mesiodistal translational movements in the 3D simulation need careful planning so as to avoid tipping, as shown in this graph. Adding an attachment to the tooth being translated makes sure that this tooth moves bodily and decreases the risk of tipping. Also, as we've discussed with buccolingual movements, consider compensating the movement. For example, if the plan is to move the tooth mesially, then add some distal crown tip to compensate for any mesial crown tip that may occur. Still in the topic of mesiodistal translational movements, we'll talk about sequential distalization and mesialization. When planning sequential distalization, consider the following. A maximum of three millimeters of distalization is predictable. Mesial outrotation of the upper first molars is often indicated in class two treatment. This should be done concurrently as the first molars start moving distal, as it will reduce the distance they need to move to obtain a class one relationship. The presence of upper wisdom teeth may hinder the distal movement. Even impacted wisdom teeth can affect results. Use of auxiliaries like elastics, type of which depends on movement desired, for example, class two or three. 
Vertical beveled attachments will help with root control as teeth move distally. Distalization works better in younger patients. It is common to have increased number of steps and a long treatment duration when planning sequential movements. How to plan sequential distalization? Start by distalizing the second molar only. Once second molar is halfway through, start moving the first molar. Once second molar has reached its position, start planning movement of the second premolar. Start distalization of the canines once first molar has reached its position. Here's a video showing the distalization in a sequential movement. Second sequential movement is the sequential mesialization. A maximum of two millimeters of mesialization is predictable. Use of auxiliaries like elastics is essential to help reinforce the movement and provide intermaxillary anchorage to counteract unwanted movements. Mesialization increases the number of steps because of the need for it to be performed sequentially. Similarly to distalization, mesialization is done sequentially as follows. Start by mesializing the first premolar. Once first premolar is halfway through, start moving the second premolar. Once first premolar has reached its final position, start moving the first molar. Once second premolar has reached its final position, plan movements of the second molar. Here's a video showing the sequential mesialization in a sequential movement. Lastly, we will be talking about some special considerations that need to be taken when planning an extraction case. Consider sequentially closing space. Prevent crown tipping by using the proper attachments and by continuous monitoring and tracking of the case. Increase movement predictability through proper staging of movements and or the use of elastics. This would also help to maintain good anchorage. Treatment may necessitate the use of sectional fixed braces at the end of treatment to align the roots. Thank you for watching.